Well, friends of Christ, this is our first Sunday of Lent. It's a, Lent is a day of a season of 40 days from May to Wednesday to Easter, not counting the Sundays. Or if you count the Sunday, there's 46 days of Lent. And the first Sunday of Lent traditionally is a theme of temptation. Now, we're never tempted, are we? Uh, not very often, anyhow. Anyway, we have a story from our Old Testament what reading comes from third chapter of Genesis where there is temptation and our gospel reading comes from the fourth chapter of Matthew where there is temptation in the first case the person succumbs to it falls in the second case Jesus stands and resists from the well, introduction from the second chapter of Genesis. The Lord took the human and settled it in the garden of Eden to farm it and, do, and to care for it. The Lord commanded the human, eat your fill from all the garden's trees, but do not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because on the day you eat from it, you will die. And then from the third chapter, the snake was the most intelligent of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say to you that you shouldn't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the snake, We may eat the fruit of the garden's trees, but not from the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden. God says, Do not eat from it, and do not touch it, or you will die. The snake said to the woman, You will not die. God knows that on the day you will eat from it, you will see clearly, and you will be like God, knowing good from evil. The woman saw that the tree was beautiful with delicious food, and that the tree would provide wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then they both saw clearly and knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made garments for themselves. Maybe some of you have seen the bumper sticker, Leap me not into temptation, I can find it myself. Well, we can all find temptation. But in looking at this brief story of the fall, in the, the version of the, of the Bible that I read, which is common kind of English grammatical, it says the snake. Now, some translations say the serpent. Anyway, some type of a talking critter. Now, it attracted my attention. Now, wouldn't it be neat if you had this critter that talks in real sentences and real words and coherent thoughts? Just think if one of Stephen Debb's dogs could speak English or Spanish. Whatever, it would be a shock, wouldn't it? But wouldn't it have been fun to be there to have that critter speaking and to hear that? But so be it. And he just doesn't really lie, doesn't quite tell the truth either, so it might be called a deceiver. Now, we have fake news, and we have a lot of things that uh, they are based on fact, but not quite true. And so we have to discern. And in this case, Adam and Eve were man and woman. They just, oh, okay, let's jump ahead. And where I think they missed the boat is after they found out that they should not have got it, because they'd had a relationship with God. God had cared for them and gave them this wonderful setting. And they screwed up. They screwed up big time. They listened to a bad voice. But instead of going to God and getting down on their knees and saying, God, we have screwed up. Forgive us. They ran and hid. They're shame. So sometimes it's a lesson that sometimes we have to stand forth when we make a mistake, whether to someone else or to God. We have to be willing to say, I screwed up. Forgive me. It's a message that we hear that does not have forgiveness in it. And that is what the essence of the New Testament is, is forgiveness. We're all sinners. We all screw up. We all do dumb things. But God forgives through his son Jesus. 
And so when Jesus was tempted, he withstood the temptation from the fourth chapter of Matthew. Then the Spirit led Jesus up into the wilderness so that the devil might tempt him. After Jesus had fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights, now I'll make a, a comment here. In the Bible, you often see 40 as number of days of events. 40 it basically means an indeterminate amount of time that was sufficient for this to take place. So when it says it rained for 40 days and 40 nights, they don't really know it was 40, but it was enough time to create the flood. It was enough time for Jesus to be weak from temptation. So and at the end of this period, he was starving, naturally. The tempter came to him and said, Since you are God's son, command these stones to become bread. Jesus replied, People will not live by bread alone, but by every word spoken by God. And that's from Deuteronomy 8.3. After that, the devil brought him into the holy city and stood him at the highest point of the temple. He said to him, Since you are God's son, throw yourself down. For it is written, I will command my angels concerning you. And they will take you up into their hands so that you will not hit your foot on a stone. And this is from Psalm 91, 11 to 12. Jesus replied, again it is written, do not test the Lord your God. From Deuteronomy 6, 16. Then the devil brought him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said to them, I will give you all things if you bow down and worship me. Jesus responded, go away, Satan, because it is written, you will worship the Lord your God and serve only him, from Deuteronomy 6.13. The devil left him, and the angels came, and they took care of him. May God bless our hearing of his holy word. Amen. Who is the tempted? Jesus was tempted. He was tempted here, he was tempted other times in his ministry. We think about it as a Mount of Transfiguration. Can I get out of doing this? You know, you've got me going to Jerusalem for this awfulness. He was tempted to say, I'm going to get on a boat and head to outer Mongolia. But he didn't do that. He, when he started this, but his whole ministry was temptations. If you are powerful, you can take over, you can kick the Romans out, you can do this, you can do that. But he stayed true to God in humbleness. Now the Spirit, which is kind of unusual to think that God's Spirit would lead him into temptation, but it's like the teacher's well, art there. Why do you give tests to see what the kids have learned? And what the teacher needs to reinforce in their teaching, right? And so maybe God is doing, did that for Jesus to make sure that Jesus has learned the right lessons. Just like he tests us, that we learn the right lessons. What does it mean to love God, to love our neighbor, to love ourselves? And, you know, if you're hungry and you have the ability to turn those stones into bread, that's pretty tempting. Yes, it is. After all, then later on, Jesus take two loaves of or five loaves of bread and two fish and feed over five thousand. So it isn't the food that the, but it's the purpose of it. If it's for selfish purposes, that's a bad temptation. If it's for the greater good, that's a good temptation. And then the next is that the devil took him to the holy city and stood him on the highest point of the temple. Uh, can you imagine you know, standing out to the highest peak of the church here and jumping off? Now, that wouldn't be a bad fall. It would be a terrible land. <laughs> We're not going to talk about Paul and Harley Roxy. <laughs> Her husband's had a couple accidents. But again, Jesus suspends human nature and natural reaction when he walks in the water to, in, to 
and meet his disciples. And kind of an inside joke, you know, Peter goes, gets off the boat and goes out to walk there, and Jesus sees so going along, and all of a sudden he realizes, I'm standing in deep water, and I'm not sinking, and he starts to. And so, one of the jokes that went around is Jesus named Peter Cephas, or Simon Peter Cephas, or the rock, being that a rock does not walk on water. So it isn't that Jesus couldn't do some of these things, but it's for the wrong thing. Just think that if you were out there jumping off the roof, the crowd he could attract, not a good thing. And then the third one is showing him all the kingdoms of the world. All you have to do is bow down and follow me. Well, at that time, Rome was in charge of the that known world. They were, they forced the attacks for Romana with rather brutal majors. Did he want to be that kind of a king? That he would brutal people with brutal majors? If you don't obey the line, zap. That's not his. But he brought about the kingdom of God, a kingdom based on love, caring for one another. Now we're all tempted, maybe these temptations, maybe not. What's tempted for one is not necessarily tempted for another. For Lyle up here, he's tempted by pie. <laughs> and I don't mean 3.14. He, had, he can't pass up a good piece of pie. Now, for somebody else, that's not a temptation. So our temptations are not the same. But are they for the right reasons? Are we doing the right thing? If you're trying to cut corners to save for yourself, to bring additional power, glory, self-worth, that's probably the wrong reason for following a temptation. But if you're tempted to speak out against injustice, against hunger, against bad things in the world, that's a good temptation. Because God wants us to speak out with righteous indignation for some of the problems in the world. And maybe by our speaking out, we can make a difference. But there are so many problems in the world. Where does it start? Where does it stop? And people are tempted for position, for power, for whatever. But that's not what God's kingdom is about. It's loving one another. Just love, and it's, as easy as it sounds, 